In this video we're looking at building quite simply a traditional comic print template using Affinity Publisher. Now this is based on the traditional American standard comic board. The original dimensions for American standard comics are 11 inches by 17 inches and usually done on Bristol board. It's the, it's the it's the type of board most often used and it's very common and very popular. And it comes in, in great pads or in single sheets. Now comic strip artists use Bristol board and it's available in pads. And if you do portrait mode or if you do landscape mode, sorry, you can fit two strips on a page. But that's usually a slightly smaller one, the 11 inch by 14 inch. The strip artists. If you're doing a one-page comic, uh, that's that one page that has the little story panels on it, that'll be your 11 by 17. Now of course the board doesn't end up that size because you have bleed, um, safe areas, margins, things like that. And in this case it reduces the size that's actually printed. For hand lettering and drawing you'll also need a T-square. And if you really want to get your lettering right, an Amy's lettering guide is a must. It's a little gadget that lets you set out the lettering lines in faint pencil on your board to start with. They get erased when you ink in. Now I've got a sample of that on a layer in this guide, but you can put your own or you can make different lettering guides. It's why I didn't actually go to all the trouble of putting lettering guides in here because you can make your own depending on what you want. You can scan them in and put them in a layer. Now this is a, this template is based on the models used by Blambot, a super excellent place to start for ideas and fonts. This template only is designed to get you started and get started on your journey as a comic artist. Super easy. So let's begin. We'll create a preset, and this is the preset for the standard USA comic, 11 by 17 inches. Now if you look at that big grey panel, you'll see down the bottom, I've already got it prepared. You should know how to create a preset by now, I hope. Relatively easy. Put all your measurements and things in the right hand column, and then click the plus sign, and it will create an unnamed icon down in that big grey panel. You then right click on that, rename it, and in this case call it Standard USA Comic Portrait. Click on that, the name then appears back up where the plus sign is, and you can click on Create to create your initial um, board. Now this is a standard size sheet this prints on, not a cut roll in a printing press. You can go down to the store and buy yourself 11 by 17 um, Bristol boards. Now uh, the name of it is um, it's a ledger size I think or or um, ANSI B is, is another size that it's mentioned as. So set up your preset carefully then rename it then press create. Now there's your blank template. You can see over the right hand side there's a master page and there's nothing fancy about <coughs> excuse me nothing fancy about that it's 11 by 17 now mark your <coughs> not coughing badly this morning mark in your boundary lines oops two lines i've put them in the master page so i can turn them off later you can see i've also marked out the various areas in colored rectangles for clarity Notice top and bottom and sides are slightly different sizes. Now put all those into the master page and then group them. Now I haven't grouped the rectangles in this one but that's alright. I will group them momentarily. But of course being in the master page you can then turn them all off. You don't want those red lines showing through, the trim lines. That's showing you where the boundaries are. The bleed line is half an inch in from the edge. Now, you know, I'm aware that on Publisher, if you add bleed to the setup back in the preset, it puts the bleed line on the outside of that board, 
We don't want that. We want the bleed line to show on the inside of the board because the board is the fixed width. Whatever we do, we can't get bigger than that board. Now, the yellow area is the bleed area. Anything that goes in there will be cut off. Next in line is that faint pink line. That's your trim line. Now, that's where your page will be trimmed to. So anything that goes in that pinkish area, it looks quite small here, but on an 11 by 17 sheet, it is actually quite large. Anything that goes in there will almost certainly be cut off. Now the safe area, of course, is inside the margins. This is fairly standard stuff. Anything inside the blue line in that safe area is what you keep. So outside the, outside the safe area and inside the trim line area, you can have a little bit of overflow of graphics or text and things like that. But anything that goes out past the pink line will be cut off. That's the size. Now mark your boundary lines, and I've put them in the master page so I can turn them off. And I've just repeated myself here. Notice top and bottom and sides are slightly different. But if you have a look in the right hand side, I've got the master page highlighted and you can see where I've got the layers, which are all the bounding lines and they're all put in there. And you can see they're all marked and they're all measured. And the rectangles as well. The rectangles are the coloured areas, the yellow, the pink and the white. And in the centre, um, a slight pinkish colour for the trim, the, the safe area, sorry. And that's all held in the master page. There's no need to have it in each page because it'll show through from the master page and you can turn it off when you come to design your comic. Now like I said, this is very short and the next page shows you the last bit. Some of the layers you can leave turned off because you won't need them. And you can see here I've also put the bounding lines in the page one because we've got page one highlighted here so all the bounding lines are in there as well but I've got them turned off um, I put them there so I could see what I was doing at one stage now you can probably remove them if you look right down the bottom layer master A shows up there as well now I haven't got that turned on there's no tick in the box there because otherwise guess what all the bounding lines will show up and I don't want that there at the moment because what I want you to see is the title layer, the sounds layer, lettering dialogue. See the blue lines there? That's the lettering layer. Then you've got lettering guides, balloons. They're on a layer of their own. In this instance, they're not. They're part of that graphic that's there. The comic layer staggered box set up. And that's there to show you how you could put in your comic, your um, story boxes, your panels. And that's a, actually a complete picture frame um, taken from another app and it's got some text and balloons in there. You have the balloons on a separate layer so you can move them around, adjust them, do what you like. Artwork underneath the balloons. So you can see there you've got a yellowish background but behind the balloons there's white. And you can do that easily enough. That's about all there is to that. It's, it's, uh, I've designed this as a one page template. So you can have more than one page in there, of course, when you're doing your comic. And you can change your, have as many of those um, comic layer staggered boxes, uh, layers as you like. Group them all, have page one, two, three, four, five, have however many pages in your comic, and have each page a separate group with its own elements in it such as the title sounds lettering the sounds of course are like the bottom right hand one Kerrang! that's a sound as you're familiar with comics as you go through if you've got this comic template you should be able to get on with your comic writing and don't forget that you've got to write a script for these <laughs> it's very difficult to just sit down and do a comic but this hopefully will be another tool in your comic toolbox. 
And that's it for this very short um, episode. Short and sweet, thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe to my channel and share the love. Um, you will find the template, as always, on my website, either the Wix one or my own one. As I mentioned before, my own one may disappear shortly, but it should always be on the Wix one. Again, thanks for watching.